can fake it, maybe you can make it with a little style. Never run mad, niece. No, not till a hot in January. 
embrace your charge too willingly. I think this is your daughter. Her mother hath many times told me so. Were you in doubt, sir, that you asked her? <laughs> Signor Benedict, no. Then you were a child. You have it full, Benedict. We may guess by this being what you are, a man. Surely the lady fathers herself. Be happy, lady, for you are like an honorable father. If Signor Leonardo be her father, she would not wear his head on her shoulders for Messina, as like him as she is. I wonder that you will still be talking, Signor Benedict. Nobody marks you. What? My dear lady disdain. Are you yet living? <laughs> is it possible the stain should die while she hath such meat food and feed it as Signor Benedict? Courtesy itself must convert to disdain if you come in her presence. Then is courtesy a turncoat? But it is certain I am loved of all ladies, only you excepted. I would I could find it in my heart that I had not a hard heart, for truly I love none. A dear happiness to women. They would also be troubled with a pernicious suitor. I thank God in my cold blood I love you humor for that. I'd rather be my dog bark at a crow than a man swear he loves me. God, keep your ladyship still in that mind, so some gentleman or other shall escape a predestinate scratch to make. Scratching could not make it worse, and for such a face as yours, where Well, you are a rare parent teacher. The bird of my tongue is better than a beast of yours. I would my horse had the speed of your tongue, and so good a continuer. But keep your way, in God's name I have done. You always end with a jade's trick. I know you of old. That is the sum of all, Leonardo. Signor Claudio, Signor Bendix, my dear friend Leonardo hath invited you all. I told him we shall stay here at least a month, and he hardly prayed that some occasion may detain us longer. And I dare swear he is no hypocrite, but prays for his heart. If you swear, my lord, you shall not be forsworn. Let me bid you welcome, my lord, being reconciled to the prince, your brother. I owe you all duty. I thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I am not of many words, but I thank you. <laughs> Your hand, Leonardo. We will go together. Benedict, sit down with the daughter of Signor Leonardo. I noted her not, but I looked on her. Is she not a, a modest young lady? Do you question me as an honest man should do for my simple, true judgment? Or would you have me speak after my custom as a professed tyrant to their sex? No, I pray thee, speak in sober judgment. Why, if they he thinks she's too <coughs> little for a high praise, too brown for a fair praise, and too low for a great praise. Only this commendation I can afford her. Were she other than she is, she were unhandsome. But, being no other but she is, I do not like her. Thou thinkest I am like a horse. I pray thee, tell me how truly how thou likest her. Would you buy her that you inquire after her? Can the world buy such a jewel? Yea, and the case to put it into. But you <laughs> get sad brows. Come, in what key shall a man take thee to go into songs? In mine eye she is the sweetest lady that ever I looked on. I can see, yet without spectacles, and I see no such matter. There is a cousin, and were she not possessed such a fury, her as much in beauty as the first of May doth the last of December. But I hope you have no intent to turn husband, have you? I would scarce trust myself, though I'd sworn the contrary. Hero would be my wife. It's come to this. Will I never see a bachelor of three score again? Go to a face, thrust thy neck into a yoke, wear the prince of it, and sigh away Sundays. Look, look, Don Pedro is returning to seek you. What have held you here that you fall not to Leonardo's? I would your grace would constrain me to tell. I charge thee on my allegiance. <laughs> oh, you hear, Count Claudio? Let it be as secret as a dumb man. I should have you think so, but my allegiance. Oh, <laughs> Mark you this. On my allegiance. He is in love. <laughs> oh, with who now? This is your greatest part. Mark how short his answer is. With hero, Leonardo's short daughter. Oh. <laughs> Mr. So, so word uttered. Not like the old tale, my lord. It is not so, nor was not so, but indeed, God forbid it should be so. If my passion is <coughs> such truth, God forbid it should be otherwise. Amen, if you love her, for truly the lady is very worthy. If you speak as to fetch me and my lord. By my troth, I speak my thought. And in faith, my lord, I spoke mine. And by my two faiths and troths, I spoke mine. That I love her, I feel. That she is worthy, I know. That I neither feel how she should be loved, nor know how she should be worthy, is the opinion that by her cannot melt out of me. I will die in it at the stake. Thou art never an obstinate heretic to the sight of beauty. And never could maintain his bars apart, but in the force of his will. That a woman conceived me, I think. That she brought me up, I likewise give her most humble thanks. But that I will have a wretched winded in my forehead, or hang my bugle on an invisible baldric, all women shall pardon me. Because I will not do them the wrong to mistrust any, I will do myself the right to trust none. And the fine is, 
mine or I will live a bachelor. I shall see thee ere I die looking pale with love. With hunger, with sickness, or with anger, my lord, not with love. Prove that ever I lose more blood to love than I will get again with drinking. Pick out mine eyes with a ballad maker's pen and hang me on the door of a brothel house with a sign of blind Cupid. Well, if ever thou dost fall from this faith, thou wilt prove a noble argument. If I do, hang me in a bottle like a cat and shoot at me. And he that hits me, let him be clapped on the shoulder and called Adam. As time shall try. In the meantime, good senor, prepare to Leonardo's and commend me to him. Tell him I will not fail him at supper, for I know he has to be great preparation. I have almost matter enough in me for such an embassage. Examine your conscience. And so, I leave you. <laughs> <laughs> My liege, your highness now may do me good. My love is thine to teach. Teach it but how, and thou shalt see how apt it is to learn any hard lesson that may do thee good. Have we allowed any son, my lord? None but hero, she's his only heir. Dost thou affect her, Claudio? Oh, my lord, when you went onward on this ended action, I looked on her with a soldier's eye that liked but had a rougher task in hand than to drive liking to the name of love. But now that I am returned and that war thoughts have left their places vacant, and their rooms come thronging soft and delicate desires, all prompting me how fair young Hero is, saying I liked her ere I went to wars. Thou wilt be like a lover presently, and tire the hero with the book of words. I don't want if you love her, hero, cherish it, and I will break with her and her father, and you shall have her. I know we shall have reveling tonight. I will assume thy part in some disguise, and tell fair hero I am Claudio. And in her bosom will I unclasp my heart, and take her here in prison to my amorous tale. Then to her father will I break. And in conclusion, she shall be thine. In practice, let us put it presently. <laughs> How now, brother? Brother, I can tell you strange news that you dreamt yet not of. Are they good? As the event stamps them, but they have a good cover. They show well outward. The prince and Count Claudio walking in a thick police alley were thus much overheard by a man of mine. The prince revealed to Count Claudio that he loved my niece, your daughter, and meant to acknowledge it this night in a dance. And if he found her accordant, he meant to the present time by the top and instantly break with you of it. We will hold it as a dream till it appear itself. But I will acquaint my daughter with all that she may be the better prepared for an answer. And her adventure, this is true. Go you and tell her of it. Cousin! You know what you have to do. Oh, I, I, I cry your mercy, friend. Um, go you with me, and I will use your skill. Good cousins, have a care of the city time. <coughs> Don John! Ah! <laughs> what the fuck here, my lord? Why are you thus out of measure sad? There is no measure in the occasion that breathes, therefore the sadness is without limit. You should hear reason. And when I have heard it, what blessing brings it? Not a present remedy, at least a patient sufferance. I wonder that thou, being as thou sayest thou art, born under Saturn, goest about to apply a moral medicine to a mortifying mischief. I cannot hide what I am. I must be sad when I have cause, and smile at no man's jest. Eat when I have stomach, and wait for no man's leisure. Sleep when I am drowsy, and attend on no man's business. Laugh when I am merry, and claw no man on his humor. Yea, but you must not make full show of this, so you may do it without controlment. You have a blade stood out against your brother, and he hath taken you newly into his grace, where it is impossible you should take true root, but by the fair weather you make yourself. It is needful that you frame the season for your own harvest. I had rather be a canker in a hedge than a rose in his grace. And it better fits my blood to be the stain of all than to rob love of any. And this, though I, I cannot be said to be a, a flattering, honest man, it must not be denied, but I am a, a plain-dealing villain. I am, I am trusted with a muzzle and, and franchised with a clog. Therefore, I have decreed not to sing in my cage. <coughs> if I had my mouth, I would bite. If I had my liberty, I would do my liking. In the meantime, let me be that I am, and seek not to alter me. Can you make no use of your discontent? I make all the use of it, for I use it only. Who comes here? What news, Baraccio? I came yonder for the great supper. The prince, your brother, is royally entertained by Leonardo, and I give you intelligence of an intended marriage. Oh, will it serve, friend of mine, to build a 
<laughs> what is he for a fool that betrothes himself to unquiet? Mary, it is your brother's right hand. Oh, the most exquisite Claudio. Oh, 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 oh. The proper squire. And who and who? Which way looks he? Mary, on hero, the daughter oh, oh, oh. and the heir of Leonardo. Oh, a very forward march. <laughs> How come you? Being entertained as a perfumer, I was smoking a mustard mule. Comes me, the prince and Claudio, hand in hand in sad comfort. I whipped me behind the heiress, and there I heard it agreed upon that the prince shall move here for himself. The part of obtaining her, give her to Count Claudio! Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> come, come, let us thither. This may prove food to my displeasure. That young startup hath all the glory of my overflow. If I can cross him in any way, I bless myself every way. You are both sure and will assist me. Uh, to the death, my lord! <laughs> Let us to the great supper. Their cheer is the greater than I were subdued. Oh, oh would the cook were a my mind! <laughs> <laughs> Let us jolly go through. What's to be done? We'll wait upon your lordship. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Remember what 
I told you. Pretty soon she was doing that kind of young rest. The fault will be in the music, cousin, if you do not move in the tongue. It's a princely jewel. Important. Tell him there is measure in everything. And so yes, have the answer. Cousin, you apprehend the tree. I have a good eye, also. I can see a church by daylight. <laughs>
<laughs> are you not Signor Benedict? <laughs> you know me well. I he. You are very close to my brother in his love. He is enamored on Hero. I pray you dissuade him from her. She is no equal for his birth. You may play the part of an honest man. In it. I know you. He loves her. I heard him swear it. Affection. Come, let us to the bank. <laughs> Not yet, I in the name of Benedict, but hear these ill news with the ears of Claudio. To certain so, the prince woos for himself. Friendship is constant in all other things save in the office and affairs of love. Therefore, let all hearts in love use their own tongues. Let every eye negotiate for itself, and trust no agent. For beauty is a witch, against whose charms faith melted into blood. This is an accident of hourly proof, which I mistrusted not. Farewell, therefore, hero. Count Claudio? Yea, the same. Come, will you go with me? Whither? Even to the next willow, for the prince hath got your hero. I wish him joy of her. Why, that's spoken like an honest drover, so they sell bullocks. But did you think the prince would have served you thus? I pray you leave me. Oh, you strike the blind man. Twas the boy that stole your meat, and you'll beat the post. If it will not be, I'll leave you. Alas, poor hurts foul. Now we'll creep into session. Oh! Ah! Oh, that my lady Beatrice should know me and not know me. The prince is fool. Ta! It may be I go under the title because I am married. Yea, but so I am apt to do myself wrong. Ah, I am not so reputed. It is the base, the bitter disposition of Beatrice that puts the world into her person and so gives me out. Well, I'll be revenged as I may. Lady Beatrice has quarreled to you. The gentleman that danced with her told her that she is much wronged by you. Oh, ho, ho. she misused me past the endurance of a block. And oh, but with one green leaf on it would have answered her. My very visor began to assume life and scorn. <laughs> she told me, not thinking I had been myself, that I was the prince's jester. That I was duller than a great fool, had like jest upon jest with such impossible conveyance upon me. That I stood like a man at mark with a whole army shooting at me. She speaks poignards in every word. Stops! If her breath were as terrible as her terminations, there would be no living near her. She would infect to the North Star. I would not marry her, though she were endowed with all Adam left before he transgressed. Come, talk not of her. I put to God some smell her. Certainly, while she is here, a man may live as quiet in hell as in sanctuary, and people would sin upon purpose because they would go thither. So indeed, all this quiet horror and perturbation follows her. Look, oh, here she comes. <laughs> <laughs> Your grace command me any service now to the world, then. I will go on the slightest errand that you can devise to set me on. I will go to the Antipodes. I will fetch you a toothpicker from the furthest inch of Asia. I will bring you the length of the Mr. Pond's foot. Go on any embassy that will take me that you can devise to set me on, rather than hold three of words conference with this heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> you have no employment for me? I'm going to desire your good company. Oh, God, sir, here's a dish I love not. I cannot endure my lady tongue. Come, come, lady. You oh. lost the heart of Signor Benedict. Indeed, my lord, he lends me a while, and I give him use for it. A double heart for a single one. Mary, before he once wanted of me with false dice. Therefore, your grace may very well say that I have lost But you have put him down, lady. You put him down. That you would not do me, my lord, lest I prove mother fool. I brought Count Claudio, whom he sent me to see. How now, Count? Wherefore are you sad? Not sad, my lord. How, then sick? Neither, my lord. The Count is neither sad, nor sick, nor well, nor merry, but civil, Count. Civil as an orange, and something of that jealous much. I think, lady, I think your blazon to be true. Though if he be so, his pity is false. Come, Claudio, I have wooed in thy name, and fair hero is one. <laughs> I broke with his father, and his good will obtain. Name the name of marriage, and God give thee joy. Count. Take of me my daughter, and with her my fortune. His grace hath made the match, and all grace say amen to it. Speak, Count, is your cue. The silence is the perfectest herald of joy. If I were but little happy, I could say how much. Lady, as you are mine, I am yours. I give away myself for you, and dote upon the exchange. Speak, cousin, or thou had not. Stop his mouth with a kiss, and let not him speak neither. Beatrice, I will get you one. 
I'd rather have one of your fathers get it. Have your grace near a brother like you. Your father has excellent husbands and the maid would come by them. Will you have me, lady? No, my lord. Unless I might have another for working day. Your grace can cause me to wear every day. But I beseech your grace to pardon me. I was born to speak all mirth and no matter. Your silence most offends me. To be very best becomes you. For out of question you were born in a merry hour. No, my lord, my mother cried. But then there was a star dance, and under that I was born. Cousin, <laughs> God give you joy! <laughs> my nature was a pleasant spirited lady. There is little of the melancholy element in her, my lord. She is never That's sad Lisa. when she sleeps. <laughs> Not even sad then, for I have heard my daughter say she hath often dreamt of unhappiness and made herself laugh it. She cannot endure here tell of a husband. Oh, by no means. She walks all the doors up too. She wore an excellent life for Signor Benedict. <laughs> oh, Lord, oh, my Lord. If we were both weak married, they would talk themselves to that. <laughs> Tomorrow, my lord. Time goes on crutches to love have all his right. Not till Monday. My dear son, which is hence a just seven night. The time to breathe too to have all things answer in my mind. Come, Claudio. You shake your head at so long a breathing, but I warn thee. The time shall not go dully by us. I, in this interim, will undertake one of Hercules' labors, which is to bring Signor Bendix and Lady Beatrice into a mountain of affection. <laughs> the one with the other. I would fain have it a match. And if you three will bow, if you three will minister such assistance as I will give you direction. My lord, I am for you, though it cost me ten nights walk. Yes. And I, my lord. And you two gentle hero, I will do any modest office, my lord, till my cousin to a good husband. And Benedict is not the most unhopefulest husband I know. Thus I praise him. <laughs> he is a proved valet, valor, confirmed honesty. I will teach you how to humor your cousin into falling in love with Signor Benedict. And with your two helps, we will practice on Benedict, despite his quick wit and queasy stomach, shall fall in love with Lady Beatrice. If we can do this, Cupid is no longer an archer. For his glory will ours. We are the only love gods. <laughs> Come in with me and I'll tell you my drift. Ah, it is so. The Count Claudio shall marry the daughter of Leonardo. Yea, my lord, but I can cross it. Any bar, any cross, any impediment will be medicinal. I am sick in displeasure to him, and whatsoever comes athwart his affection ranges evenly to mine. How canst thou cross this marriage? Not honestly, my lord, but so covertly that no dishonesty shall appear in me. Show me briefly how. I think I told your lord <coughs> how much I am in favor of Margaret, the lady gentleman of the hero. I remember. I can, at any seasonable instant of the night, appoint her to look at her lady's chamber window. What life in that is to be the death of this marriage? The poison of that lies you in your temper. Go you to the prince, your brother. Spare not to tell him that he had wronged his honor in marrying the renowned Claudio, whose estimation mightily hold up to a contaminated stale such as one as hero. What proof shall I make of that? Proof enough to excuse the prince, to vex Claudio, to undo hero, and kill Leonardo. <laughs> Look you any further? <laughs> Only to despite them will I endeavor anything. Find your brother and, and find me a neat place to meet them. Tell them that you know that Hero loves me. And, to, and, and, and for the love of your brother, his love, and, and your friend's reputation, who is less likely to be cause of the semblance of a maid, that you have discovered thus. Offer them instances which are no less likely than to see me at her window and hear me call Margaret Hero. And bring them to see this the very night before the intended wedding. For in the meantime, I will so fashion the matter that Hero shall be absent, and there shall appear such seeming truth of Hero's disloyalty that jealousy shall be called assurance and all preparation <laughs> overthrown. <laughs> Grow this to what adverse issue it can, I will put it in practice. Be cunning in the working of this, and thy fee is a thousand ducats. Be you so constant in your accusations, and my cunning shall not shame you. I will presently go learn their day of marriage. <laughs> 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 I do much wonder about one man seeing how much another man is a fool when he has dedicated his behaviors to love. Will, after he hath left in such shallow follies of others, become the argument of his own scorn by falling in love. And such a man is Claudio. I have
have known when there was no music in him but the drum and the fife, and now will he rather hear the tamer and the pipe? I have known when he would have walked ten miles of foot to see a good armor, and now will he lie ten nights awake carving the fashion of a new doublet? <laughs> he was wont to speak plain and to the purpose, like an honest man and a soldier, and now he has turned orthography, his words, a very fantastical language, so many strange dishes. Will I be so converted and see with these eyes? I cannot tell. I think not. I will not be sworn, but love may transform me to an oyster. But I'll take my oath in it. Till he hath made an oyster of me, he shall never make me such a fool. One woman is fair, yet I am well. Another, wise, yet I am well. Another, virtuous, yet I am well. But till all graces be in one woman, one woman shall not come in my grace. Rich she shall be, that servant. Fair, for I'll never look on her. Wise, for I'll never cheapen her. Virtuous, of good discourse, an excellent musician, and her hair, her hair shall be of what color it please God. Oh, the prince and monsieur love. I shall hide me in the arbor. <laughs>
on so she had to bring a sheet of paper. Mm -hmm. Can I just have a sheet of paper? I remember a pretty just your daughter told us of. Oh, and she had read it and was reading it over and found Beatrice and Benedict between the sheets. Look! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
If I do not pity her, I am a villain. If I do not love her, I am cruel. I will go get her picture. <laughs>
forbid him to wear it. I will only be bold with bending. For from the crown of his head to the sole of his foot, he is all mirth. He hath twice or thrice cut Cupid's bowstring, and the little hangman dare not choose him. His heart is as sound as a bell, and his tongue doth the clapper. For what his heart thinks, his tongue speaks. Gallants. I am not as I have been. So say I, methinks you are sad. I hope he be in love. Hang him, truant! There's no true drop of blood in him that can be truly touched by love. If he be sad, he wants money. I have the toothache. Draw it! Hang it! You must hang it first and draw it afterwards. What? Sigh for the toothache. <laughs> well, everyone can master a grief, but he that has it. Yet say I, he is in love. There's no appearance of fancy in him, unless it be fancy that he has some strange disguises. If he be not in love with some woman, there is no believing old signs. Has any man seen him at the barber? No, but the barber's man has been seen with him. <laughs> Oh, he, he rubs himself with civet. Can you smell him out by that? Oh, that's as much to say the sweet youths in love. The greatest note of it is his melancholy. And what does he want to wash his face? Nay, what paint himself in which I hear what they say of him? Nay, but his jesting spirit, which is now crept into a lute string and now governed by socks. That tells the heaviest tale. Conclude, conclude, conclude. He is in love. Nay, but I know who loves him. As do I. I warrant one who knows him not. Yes, and his ill condition. <coughs> and in despite of all, dies for him. She shall be buried with her face upwards. Yet this is no charm for the toothache. Old Senor, walk aside with me. I have studied eight or nine wise words to speak with you, but these hobby horses must not hear. All my life to break with him without Beatrice. Tis even so. Hero and Margaret have by this played their parts with Beatrice, and then the two bears will not bite one another when they meet. <laughs> my lord and brother, God save you. Good evening, brother. <laughs> if your leisure is served, I would speak with you. In private? If it please you, yet Count Claudio may hear, for what I would speak of concerns him. What's the matter? Means your lordship to be married tomorrow. You know he does. I know not that when he knows what I know. If there be any impediment, <laughs> I pray you discover it. You may think I love you not. Let that appear hereafter, and aim better at me by that I now will manifest. For my brother, I think he holds you well, and in dearness of heart, hath hoped to effect your ensuing marriage. Surely, suit ill spent, and labor ill bestowed. Why, what's the matter? <sighs> I came hither to tell you, and circumstances shortened, she has been too long a-talking of. The lady is disloyal. Who? Hero? Even she, Leonardo's hero, your hero, every man's hero. <laughs> <laughs> disloyal? The word is too good to paint out her wickedness. I could say she were worse. Think you of a worse title and I should fit her to it. Wonder not till further warrant. Go but with me tonight, and you shall see her chamber window entered, even the night before her wedding day. If you love her, tomorrow wed her, but it would better fit your honor to change your mind. May this be so? I will not think it. If you dare not trust that you see, confess not that you know. If you will follow me, I will show you enough. And when you have seen more and heard more, proceed accordingly. If I see anything tonight why I should not marry her, tomorrow in the congregation where I should wed, there will I shame her. And as I woo to the pain with her, I will join with thee to disgrace her. I will disparage her no farther till you are my witnesses. Bear it coldly but till midnight, and let the issue show itself. Oh, day untowardly turned! Oh, mischief strangely thwarting! Oh, plague right well prevented! And so will you say when you have seen the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> they look upon me and wonder, where is his heart? They set upon me, tear asunder. My malicious art would not be blamed for taking aim at my speed. I have nothing left to gain from pushing my hungers under a festive <laughs> to make it disappear. So I'll tear the world apart. <laughs> you, you have done well. Have you managed to sell them? Like a sorcerer casting a spell. <laughs> Let's send these boys off to hell. Come havoc and mayhem lead us to joy. These simple boys are credulous toys. Havoc and mayhem 
Let us repay them! The cruel sights! The loss of rights! That followed our fight! This is gonna be good! <laughs>
wonder at it. Thou shows art unconfirmed, and knowest that this, this fashion of a doublet or a hat or cloak is nothing to a man. <laughs> Does that hear somebody? No, t'was the main on the house. <laughs> Seest thou not what a deformed thief this fashion is, how giddily he turns about between hot blood and 14 and 530. All this I see, and I see that the fashion wears out more apparel than the man. But is it not true that thyself are getting with the fashion too, that thou hast shifted thy tale to tell me of the fashion? Not so neither, but to know that I tonight have wood Margaret, the waiting the lady to Japiro, by the name of Hero, she leans me out her lady's chamber window and bids me a thousand times good night. I tell this tale vilely. Oh, but first I should tell thee that the prince and Claudio and my master planted, placed, and, and possessed by my master Don John so far in the orchard this amiable encounter. I thought they that Margaret was hero. Two of them did. A prince and Claudio, but the devil, my master knew she was Margaret. <laughs> Hardly by his oaths, which first possessed them. Hardly by the dark night, which did deceive them. But chiefly by my villainy, which did confirm any slander that Don John had made. Away went Claudio and me. Or even he were when he was appointed the next morning at the temple. And there, in front of the whole congregation, shame her or what they or what he saw, and sent her home without a husband. Uh, <laughs> Such another analogy become a man. He 
swore he would never marry, and yet in the spite of his heart, he eats his meat without grudging. And how you may be converted. Oh, I know not. But we think you look with your eyes with other women too. What face is this that they come to eat? Do not to false gallop. Madam, the frock, the prince, the count, Senor Benedict, Don John, and all the gallants of the town have come to fetch you to church. Help to dress me, good cuz, good Meg, good Ursula. <laughs> what would you with me, honest neighbors? Mary, sir, I would have some confidence if you wish to serve to you. Marie, I pray you, receive a busy time with me. Mary, that it is, sir. Yes, in truth, it is, sir. What is it, my uh, good friend? <laughs> good man, Virgin, sir, speaks a little off the matter. An old man, sir, and his wits are not so much as God has <coughs> power to desire they were, but in faith, honest as the skin between his brows. Yes, I thank God I am as honest as any man living that is old and no honester than I. Piercings are odorous. Play brass. Neighbor Burgess. Neighbors, you are tedious. <laughs> <laughs> it pleases your worship to say so, but we are officers. But truly, for my own part, if I were as tedious as a king, I could find it in my heart to bestow it all upon your worship. All thy tediousness on me, ah? Uh? Yeah, it's worth a thousand pounds more than tis. For I hear a good exclamation on the worship bits of any man in the city. And though I be a poor man, I am glad to hear it. And I so would, am I. I would fain know what you have to say. Mary, sir, I watch tonight, accepting your works at presence, have taken a couple of as errant knaves as any in Messina. Well said, if they neighbor Burgess. Well, <laughs> God's a good man, and two men ride the horse. One must ride behind. <laughs> <laughs> Honest soul, by my trophy is as ever broke bread. But God is to be worshipped. Alas, all men are not alike. Indeed, <laughs> neighbor, <laughs> short of you. Gives that God gives. I must leave you. One word, sir. Our watch, sir. Having a deed. Having a deed taken a couple of. One word, sir. Our watch, sir. Having a deed taken a couple of. There it needs. What happened this morning? Examine for your worship. <gasps> Take their examination yourself and bring it me. I am now in great haste as it may appear unto you. It shall be suffocants. Drink the wine <laughs> ere you go. Fare you well. My lord, they stay for you to give your daughter to her husband. Oh, oh wait upon them. I am ready. Go, my partner. Go. Get to the branch of Zico. I've been to bring his pen and ink to the jail. We are now to examination of these men. We must do it wisely. We will spare for no way. I warn you. Meet me at the jail. For the <laughs> Come, Friar Francis, to be free. Step to the plain form of marriage and curtail their particular duties afterward. You come hither, my lord, to marry this lady? No. <laughs> uh, to be married to her. Friar, you come to marry her. <laughs> lady, you come hither to be married to this count? I do. If either of you know any inward impediment why you should not be conjoined, I charge you on your souls to utter it. Know you any hero? None, my lord. Know you any coward? I dare make his answer none. Oh, what men dare do, what men may do, what men daily do, not knowing what they do. Stand thee by, friar. Father, by your leave, will you with free and unconstrained soul give me this maid, your daughter? As, as freely son as God did give her me. And what have I to give you back whose worth may counterpoise this rich and precious gift? Nothing unless you render her again. Sweet prince, you learn me noble thankfulness. There, <laughs> lady, I'll take her back again. Give not this rotten orange to your friend. She's with the sign and semblance of her honor. Behold, how like a maid she blushes here. Oh, what authority and show of truth can cunning sin cover itself with all. Comes not this blood as modest evidence to witness simple virtue? Would you not swear all that you see her that she were a maid by these exterior shows? But she is none. She knows the heat of a luxurious bed. Her blush is guiltiness, not modesty. What do you mean, my lord? Not to be married, not to knit my soul to an approved one. Oh, dear my lord, you and your own group have vanquished the resistance of her youth and made the feet of her virginity. I know what you will say if I had known her. You will say she didn't embrace me as a husband, and so extenuate the forehand sins. No, Leonardo, I never tempted her with word too large, but a 
as a brother to his sister, showed bashful sincerity and comely love. Thanks be ever on the rise to you! Out of the ah! evening! I will bring you down! You seem to me, Diane and her orb, as chaste as the flood air be blown. But you are more intemperate in your blood than Venus, or those pampered animals that rage in heaven's sensuality. Is my lord well that you speak so wise? A sweet prince, why speak not you? What should I speak? I stand dishonored that I have gone to link my dear friend to a common stale. <laughs> Into a pit of ink that the 
face, a thousand innocent shades and angel whiteness beat away those blushes, and in her eye there hath appeared a fire to burn the errors that these princes hold against her maiden truth. Call me a fool, trust not my reading nor my observations, which with experimental seal doth warn the tenor of my book. Trust not my age, my reverence calling, nor divinity of this sweet lady lie here guiltless under some fitting error. Fire, this cannot be. Thou seest, all the grace she hath left, she will not add to her damnation a sin of perjury. She denies it not. Why seekest thou to cover with excuse that which appears here in proper nakedness? Lady, what vanity you are accused of? They know that you accuse me. I know none. If I know more of any man alive than that which made in modesty doth war, let all my sins lack mercy. O oh, my father, prove you that any man can verse with me in hours of meter, that I yesterday maintain the change of words with any creature, refuse me, hate me, torture me to death. <laughs> there is some strange misprison in the princes. The two of them have the very bent of honor. If their wisdoms be misled in this, the practice of it lives in John the Bastard, whose spirits toil and frame of villainies. I know not. If they speak but truth of her, these hands shall tear her. If they wrong her honor, the proudest of them shall well hear of it. Pause a while and let my counsel sway you in this case. Your daughter here, the prince has left for dead. Let her a while be secretly kept in and publish it that she is dead indeed. Maintain a mournful ostentation, and on your family's old monument hang mournful epitaphs and do all rites that appertain unto a burial. Mary, this well carried on her behalf shall change slander to remorse. That is some good. She dying, as it must be so maintained upon the instant she was accused, shall be lamented, pitied, and excused of every hearer. For it so falls out that what we have we prize not to the worth whilst we enjoy it, but being lacked and lost, why then we rack the value. Then we find the virtue that possession would not show us whilst it was ours. And so will it fare with Claudio. When he shall hear she has died upon his words, the idea of her life shall sweetly creep into his study of imagination, and every lovely organ of her life shall come apparelled in more precious habit, more moving, delicate, and full of life into the eye and prospect of his soul than when she lived indeed. Then shall he mourn, and wish he had not so accused her, no, though he thought his accusation true. But, if all aim but this be left with false, the supposition of the lady's death will quench the wonder of her infamy. And if it sort not well, you may conceal her, as best befits her wounded reputation in some reclusive and religious life, out of all eyes, minds, tongues, and injuries. Signor Leonardo. Let the friar advise you, and though you know my inwardness and love is very much unto the prince and Claudio, yet by mine honor I will deal with this as secretly and justly as your soul should with your body. Being that I flow in grief, small wine may leave me. Tis well consented. Presently away. Come, lady, die to live. This wedding day perhaps is but prolonged. Have patience and endure. Kill 
Claudio. <laughs> Not for the wide world. You kill me to tonight. Very well, Terry, sweet I am God, though I am here. There is no love in you. Be and I pray you let me go. We'll be friends first. You dare yeah. easier be friends with me than fight with my enemies. Claudio, thine enemy? Is he not approved in the height of villain that has slandered, scorned, dishonored my kinswoman? Know that I were a man, but bear her in hand until they come to take hands with them with public accusation, uncovered slander, unmitigated rancor. Oh God, that I were a man, I would eat his heart in the marketplace. Hear me. What <laughs> was a man out of the window of proper say? Nay, but she is a hero. She is wrong. She is slandered. She is unjust. Be princes and counties. Surely a princely testimony of a goodly count, count compact, a sweet gallant, surely. So that I were a man for his sake, that I had any friend would be a man for my sake. Manhood is melted into curtsies, valor into compliment, and men are only turkeys to tongue and true ones too. He is now as valiant as Hercules that only tells a lie and swears it. That cannot be a man with wishing, before I will die a woman with grieving. Harry, sweet Beatrice, by this hand I love thee. Who says for my love some other way than swearing by it? Think you in your soul that Count Claude you have wronged, hero? Nay, sure as I have a thought or a soul. Enough. I am engaged. I will challenge him. I will kiss your hand, and so I leave you. By this hand, Claudio shall render me a dear account. As you hear of me, so think of me. Go, comfort your cousin. I must say she is dead. And so, farewell. And which is more, an officer. And which is more. 
much as ever there may have to see them. Bring him away! <laughs> oh! Now you were here to write me down this! Brother! <laughs> if you go on lust, you will kill yourself! And tis not wisdom thus to second grief against yourself! I pray thee, seize thy counsel, put crawls into thine ears as profitless as water in a sin. Give not me counsel, nor let no comforter delight mine ear. Such a one whose wrongs do sit with mine. Bring me a father that so loved his child, whose joy of her is overwhelmed like mine. Bid him speak of patience. Measure his woe, the length and breadth of mine, as thus for thus, and every strain for strain, and every branch, liniment, shape, and form. Such a one will smile and stroke his beard, bid sorrow wag, grow heavy with his throne, catch free with proper mixed with fortune, drunk with candle wings, bring him yet to me, and I of him will gather patience. There is no such man! Yet bend not all the harm upon yourself. Make those that do offend you suffer too. There thou speakest reason, nay, I will do so. My soul doth tell me Hero is belied, and that shall Claudia know, so shall the prince, all of them that thus dishonor her. Here comes the prince and Count Claudio hastily. Good in, good in. And you, my lord. We have some haste, Leonardo. Some haste, my lord, will fare you well. Are you so hasty? Now will all is one. Nay, do not quarrel with us, good old man. If he could write himself with quarreling, some of us would lie low. Who wrongs me? Mary, thou dost wrong me, thou dissembler, thou. Nay, never lay thy hand upon thy sword, I fear thee not. Mary, beshrew my hand if it should give your age such cause of fear. Faith, my hand meant nothing to my sword. Tush, tush, man, never fleer and jest at me. I speak not like a doter nor a fool, for the privilege of age to brag what I had done being young, or what I would do were I not old. No, Claudio. To thy head! Thou hast so wronged my innocent child and me. I am forced to lay my reverence by red hair, to bruise of many days, and shall be a trial for man. I say thou hast belied my innocent child. I fled her up both through and through her heart, and she lies buried with her ancestors. Oh, that you were never scandal slept, save this of hers, framed by thy villainy. My villainy? Thine, Claudio, thine, I say. You say not right, old man. My lord, my lord, I'll prove it on his body if he dares by the night fence and active practices. May of youth and bloom of lustihood. Away, I will not have to do this. Can thou so death me? Thou hast killed my child. <laughs> thou killest me, boy, thou shalt kill a man. He shall kill two of us, <laughs> and men indeed. But that's no matter. Let him kill one man first. Win me and wear me. Let him answer me. Come, follow me, boy. Come, sir, boy. Come, follow me. Sir, boy, I'll whip you from your fawning fence. Nay, as I am a gentleman, I will. Brother. Content yourself. God knows I loved my niece, and she is dead. Slandered to death by villains that dare as well answer a man indeed as I dare take a serpent by his tongue. Boys, thieves, crackers, jacks. Man, I know them, yea, and what they weigh down to the utmost scruple, scambling, outfacing, fashion logging board that lie and cog and flout, deprave and slander, go antically and show outward hideousness, speak up half a dozen words that they might hurt their enemies if they durst, and this is all. But, brother, do not you meddle, let me do it. Use thy wit. 
my scabbard, shall I draw it? Dost thou hold thy wit by thy side? Never any did so, though very many have been beside their wit. I will bid thee draw as we do the minstrels. Draw to pleasure us. As I am an honest man, he looks pale. Art thou sick or angry? You are a villain, <coughs> I jest not. I only get good how you dare, when you dare, with what you dare. Do me right, or I will protest your cowardice. You have killed a sweet lady, and her death shall fall heavy on you. Let me hear from you. I will meet with thee, so I may have good cheer. Fare you well, boy. You know my mind. My lord, for your many courtesies, I thank you. I must discontinue your company. Your brother, the bastard, hath fled from Messina. You among you have killed a sweet and innocent lady. For my lord Blackbeard there, he and I shall meet. Until then, peace be with him. He's in earnest, in most profound earnest, and I'll warrant thee for the love of Beatrice, and hath challenged thee most sincerely. Did he not say my brother was fled? Did what she spoke. 
spoke to me, but always hath been just and virtuous in all that I do know by her. Moreover, sir, which is indeed, is not under my blood, the plaintiff here, the defendant, did call me ass! <laughs> Dr. 
Very ill. And how about you? Very ill too. Sir God loved me and men. And there will I leave you too. For here comes one in haste. Madam, come to your uncle. The honor both boy all home. Peace. I will stop your 
We got um, Tony and all the tech people. <laughs> So, so, so lucky to get to work with your children. They're incredible. <laughs>